Skrillex has released two albums in the last week. First was Quest for Fire, and a week later was Don't Get Too Close. Both have gotten somewhat of a mixed reception from uh, users, but uh, yeah, either way, two new albums, and it's pretty exciting. This is the first thing Skrillex has released in a uh, quite a while. Uh, whatever, this intro sucks. Just uh, Look, you get it, okay, Skrillex, the guy was like... It, uh, actually, I think I explained it even more in my thing. Why am I even still recording? Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste of Music, and today we are reacting to the new Skrillex albums. That's right, there's more than one. Skrillex was really big back in the day for being a household name in dubstep, if you will, being one of the biggest electronic artists at the time, leaving a huge impact and a huge wave. However, that sound that Skrillex helped uh, popularize has kind of died off. But with that being said, that hasn't stopped Skrillex from continuing to make music. Quest for Fire is the newest endeavor from Skrillex, and it has been very positively received, I should say. The overall consensus is, damn, this is pretty great. Uh, majority of people are really vibing with this uh, for this new album. However, the sister album, people aren't really vibing with at all. People actually don't like it at all. Uh, so I'm very curious to check out both of these and to see... Uh, to see, to see what the hype is or see what, you know, see what's going on over here. Looks like we have, uh, some interesting features here. Missy, uh, Missy Elliott. Of course, they got the Joker. Oh my God, we live in a society, guys. It's Joker. Uh, I don't know who Joker is. Fred again. It's, you know. Chocolate starfish! Yeah, so you got a bunch of people. Sway Lee. Porter Robinson is one of the people here who I'm interested in, so. Yeah, without that being, uh, without much else being said, let's, uh, give it a shot. First song, leave me like this. Please don't leave me like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's bombs. Okay. Okay. Production here is very sharp. The drop is quite nice. Uh, I like the vocal line a lot. Um, overall, it's got good pieces. It's got me moving. Also, who's Bobby Raps? I don't know, man. A lot of these people are just... I, I don't know. This is the Kid A of dubstep? I don't know about that. Only have to remove some points since the featured artist has the word rap in it. Wow. UK Garage, yeah. Okay, okay. Skrillex's career is really funny to you? How come? Leave Me Like This is led by an extremely catchy vocal melody that is super infectious, and I feel like Skrillex is on it in terms of making something land here. I think that this is actually a great start. It's a smiley ball for me. Really catchy, creative production. Uh, still kind of going for some formulaic ideas, which for house music is uh, to be expected, but I also feel like the song doesn't last too long. It grabs my ear and it gives me a pleasant, a pleasant listen while it's here. I actually thought that was a fantastic start. Next song. Ratatata. Ratatata. The gun goes DJ Skrillex, we be the realest team on the billets. Watch out, I kill it. That's a marvelous, fantabulous, a bad chick. The flow sick. This the kind of beat to go rat ta ta. This the kind of beat to go rat ta ta. This the kind of beat to go rat ta ta. Super duper fly, hee 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 ha. Why do people want you to put your hands up? I don't like new Skrillex. These drops to me are weak as fuck. Yeah, but a lot of the drops that I've heard, especially, I'll just say in dubstep in general, are super gimmicky and really outdated. I, I, I like the direction of more subtle stuff like this. I, I think that's more enjoyable overall. Brad, this isn't dubstep. Skrillex no longer makes dubstep music. Yeah, because dubstep is dead. There's no there's no land left to explore there, at least where you want to keep a relevant career. But I still feel like Skrillex, you know, has those roots, right? You still hear a little bit of that sharp noise, uh, some of the stuff that you kind of hear... Uh, and artists who were inspired by the dubstep era as well. So um, it, as much as, yeah, it's not dubstep, I still hear, you know, the remains of it. <laughs> bro Step is actually dead. I don't really, is Bro Step the one that's like dog barks before drops and like awful shit? I, I feel like I've heard one Bro Step album and I thought it was like the worst thing ever. I, I don't even remember. Anyways, that song is a club banger and it goes hard. Skrillex brings amazing production and Missy Elliott uh, brings the party. It wasn't Missy Elliott's job to make a super lyrical spiritual miracle track and I appreciate that. I appreciate that she's just sort of uh, bringing the vibe, bringing the bops and overall it's all right. It's a light smiley ball. It got me moving. Oh my god, guys, next song has Joker. Yo, gay <laughs> gay peanut sending in five gifted. Thank you so much. Anyone who is gifted uh, is able to access the uh 
Hulk Hogan video. This next song has Joker on it, you guys. Oh my God, the Joker. Listen. Wow, listen, huh? Shit goes hard though, dude. You hear that bass? Yeah. Let off the tingle. Brr. Let off the tingle. Brr. Let off the tingle. Brr. Big man put in that work. Yeah. Uh. Big man put in that work. Uh. Yeah. When I walk in the spot, three on me. Uh. Let off the tingle. Brr. Hey, hey, hey. So when does Joker start laughing? You know how I got these scars? Hey. This is like a mix of drill and wonky and yeah, let off the tingle. Chop up my show network, yeah. Big man put in big ting work. So Tears is just sort of a, it's a banger. It, it kind of goes. I think that the listen sample is a little ridiculous, but overall it's a fun song. So um, it works for me. It works. Uh, I'd give it a score. I'd give it a light smiley ball. I, I think that there are some moments in there where the synths are just a little ugly and don't really match, but then it quickly reels back in. I feel like it's still enjoyable. No Joker. Yo, I was expecting the Joker and I didn't get the Joker. I'm disappointed. Next song, Rumble, uh, featuring Fred again and Floatin. Get a Wombo. Run for them life. When I step into the jungle, said they wouldn't group up. For you know hey. what I love to. I send shots for your team and leader. Yeah, that. Killers in the jungle. Killers in the jungle. I bet. Okay. DJ Khaled! Yo, yeah, that. This is cool. It's quite creative. It's not super creative. It's just like a throwback to old UK dubstep. I disagree. I actually think that this, uh, the sound of this is quite interesting and creative for the album it's a total switch up and i like the uh fact that it kind of sounds like a jungle even though it's just like beating it into your head jungle jungle you know it's kind of a, a deeper sound uh, throughout this i i actually like this quite a bit yeah yeah let off the tingle rumble is quite creative and quite interesting stop mentioning burial please i don't really see the burial comparison i mean i don't know burial has a very one-of-a-kind sound that I, I i i don't know i don't see it Anyway, song Smiley Ball, I like it. Next song, Butterflies, featuring uh, Stara and Fortet. Do I know Fortet? It sounds familiar. You hear that? Mr. Krabs walking, killers in the jungle. <laughs> Hello. I was wondering if you could play that song again. Oh, I need that as a sound bite. The one that goes, ah. The hell is this feature? Feature his ass. It does sound like Tory Lanez, you're right. Production here is great though, regardless. How do you request albums? Thank you. Um, either uh, become a member and do it monthly with everyone else, or pay uh, for an album $9 a minute. I did get my Roblox stuff back, you're right. Actual rare Roblox W. I did not expect them to help me, but it seems that like, I mean, I gave them every piece of evidence under the kitchen sink that I was actually hacked, including showing them everything else that I had that was hacked. Uh, and yeah, they actually helped me out. They actually came through. Um, anyways, that song uh, had some things that I really hated about it, but also at the same time was one of the most complete feeling, had one of the best drops. It's a light smiley ball to a strong shrug, as I thought that the vocal performance was really dull and a poor choice overall. Uh, despite, I feel like, everything else about that track being spectacular. Pretty alright. Next song, Inhale, Exhale. I kind of fuck with it. You know, I don't, I don't hate it. I'm way too high, but make it glamorous. I feel my conglomerates, whatever that means. Shout out to Charlie Sheen. Let my boy out of prison. I'm on a fucking mission. Smoke all of the crack. Inhale, exhale, yeah. So I actually love that vocal sample and I appreciate that it is simple in what it's doing, but extremely effective. It's like I'm inhale, inhale, exhale, way too high is like the whole idea. But then it's the, you know, the, the sampling and all the crazy wonky bullshit that I feel like makes it feel uh, immersive. I thought that was amazing. It's a smiley ball. One of my favorites here. Next song, A Street I Know. 
Oh my god, guys. It just on us. I was, I was all I just know. Gold up in my teeth. Spoke step for the win? No. This is not spoke step. Nah, dude. And spoke step isn't even a real genre. It's just what AGR uh, fans uh, call what whatever awful bullshit they do to make them feel like they're more alternative than they actually are. You want to know what spoke step is? It's this. And that's as much as I could play before the stream actually gets universally blocked. Uh, but yeah, that's... <laughs> and that's on their song titled Woody Allen, by the way. Which, by the way, goes, Now I'm feeling just like Woody Allen. I feel like if you're able to land on a catchy and effective vocal line, having it repeat over and over again, uh, I don't really have an issue with it because there's something very hypnotic about it. Uh, there's something fun following along with it, and I feel like you're able to transform everything around it to make it even more interesting. Second album is nothing like this, by the way. He was talking about how this is the Hype Rave album, the other one's supposed to be more soft, melancholic. Listen that you'd play at home after a concert. Oh, okay. Smoke em. Hey, I'm on the street. Uh, pop smoke, I don't stand with the feet. I don't stand with the feet. Spokestep is the one song that's like better letting you go. Rufus, I, I don't, I mean, uh, still, Spokestep, here. This is what they're uh, referring to. Which to me, this just, I, I just feel like it's a vocal sample chop. I, I don't see how having that would completely redefine a genre. There's, wait, there's a, stop, wait. No, dude, that can't be real. No, dude. No way. What? Hold on. That's real? There's a Lil Wayne remix? Okay, let's be honest here, okay? The Lil Wayne uh, remix on Believer, pretty good, okay? I, but I'm not sitting through the rest of this crap for it. That was so underwhelming. See why it works here in this EDM setting, it works so much better than this pop setting where also, by the way, the lyrics of this song are some of the worst I've ever heard on any song. It's gold up in my teeth, I missed you in the basement, but your brother was a good substitute for you, and then talks about how he let her down, uh, and then if the roof is on fire, or the roof is on fire and no one let her know or something, yeah, it's, um... Oh, low key, yeah, and I wanted to listen to the album because the album this is from, guys, is called Low Key, Low Key Savage. It's true, Low Key Savage. Low Scree Savage. Let's watch this YouTube poop in my, um, oh, yeah, yeah, this, this is a good YouTube poop. Yeah, good idea. Let's pause Skrillex for a second. This is a good one. What am I doing? What are you doing? Where am I? Hector's here! If he finds one health violation, good. We've got to kill him. Oh, I say 40 minutes, I'm at 4 minutes. Every song on this album has a fun formula that for some reason never gets old. Without ever letting you know, it was fallen. I mean, production on this is stellar. I actually like the sample. I think I've already said my piece with this track, but I think it's just overall really solid. It is smiley ball. Uh, Tom says, glad I could finally join the Brad stream TM. It's wonderful to see your live reaction to a project that is actually enjoyable. Keep up the good work and please keep up the content. Much love from Germany. Thank you so much for the 20. Oh, it's euros. Oh, those are useless. I mean, I would say thank you, but you gave me a currency that's basically worth, uh, it's worth sesame seeds in the U.S., so, um... <laughs> yo, what? <laughs> yo, this some... Yo, what is this Europe language right here, okay? Oh! DJ 
Okay. We get an A rap money! This is like the perfect level of overwhelming. This is this is amazing. This goes very hard. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Skrillex is a really good producer, and I feel like a lot of his stuff kind of got lost in uh, lost in a bit of gimmick of like the like 2010s. But I, I gotta say, man, this this sounds to me like a, an artist who's matured and who wants to just explore new things, and who's also very talented. Uh, this is very refreshing, and overall, just a great project so far. Sing along, Brad. No. Oh my god. Oh shit. That's great. Fuck all you hoes. Detroit till I die, motherfucker. I think that uh, Xeno was the best song on this album so far. It is the most satisfying. I really like that it's branching out into uh, just a completely different language, showing that it doesn't really matter. Uh, it being the song that slaps the hardest and honestly has some of the best payoffs, I thought that was remarkable. It's a smiley ball. Hey Brad, it was my birthday yesterday and I saw that you loved the Paramore album, which validated me loving it, so it made my birthday better. Glad to see you're back. Hope your vacation was good. Thank you, Prodigy the Great. Glad that you're enjoying stealing my opinions. Just know that my lawyers will be contacting you soon. All right, next song, Too Bizarre, Juked. This has Sway Lee on it, so it might suck. But hey, it might also be good. Brad, screw you. 20 euros are actually worth 21.40 freedom bucks. So yeah, not really peanuts. Still much love for me. Look, it might technically be worth more US dollars, but let's be honest here, okay? The shame of having to convert Europe money to American money. I mean, it's like it's like accepting blood money, all right? It, it goes against our, our blood of our nation. Oh, fuck. Call 911 now! This is like if there was a hit French Montana song with the Sway Lee feature in 2016 and someone made a somewhat generic remix a year later and French Montana listed it as a single. That is so oddly specific. You might... <laughs> I, I don't know how to take that. Too Bizarre is a miss for me. It's a low shrug. I don't like it. Now, I think that's got some amazing production moments, but I think that Sway Lee is just such a boring voice. Uh, and, and and the thing is, is like, I, I just hate his vocals, so I don't think that he works as like a vocal chop here. In fact, I'd say that he's just really intolerable uh, and by far the worst part of the song. Um, though I do appreciate uh, that I was able to move along with it. It was mostly when I just forgot that I was listening to Sway Lee. His voice is ass, like straight up. And the thing that I think that he's actually improved vocally since he started. I mean, do you guys remember the original, like what Sway Lee sounded like? I don't got no type. Why is it clean? Hydrate, here we go. Mama, oh my, guys. Guys, they got Travis Scott here. Oh my God. We the best. Oh, we. Hey. What my ready for the combat? Me against them when I'm on that. That production is killer, dude. It's him. Bring me this. Bring me this. Bring me this. Bring me this. What do I look like that on Roblox? What do you mean? What's wrong with my profile? Oh. What's wrong with my Roblox profile picture? What's the issue? <laughs> I don't see the problem here, huh? You want to clarify? <laughs> We got that drip. <laughs> song has some things that I like about it and some things that I don't. Uh, I think that that ending was a little bit weak. Overall, it's a smiley ball though, as I think that it had some parts that I loved. Look, I played Roblox a ton as a kid, mostly for trading or whatever, but Roblox has some of the most addictive games anywhere, okay? I'm just saying, like, literally Roblox is like if, it's like a battle royale of who can make the most addictive game and get people to play it nonstop. And it's just fun to participate in it. You know what I mean? Because the only way to succeed is to get people to keep playing your shit. Uh, so, you know, I love it. I love Roblox. Crack, actual crack game simulator. Warp Tour 05 with Pete Wentz. They're 
Blair Show. We're backstage at 2005 Warp Tour with Lawrence, like the three I lost my way again. I found good space. Am I never gonna hear the end of that for, sp for dropping 10k on a Disney vacation? Okay. Scratch is an itch. Dude, we literally have Don Tolliver at home. The other album literally has Don Tolliver? Then why did they s settle for this budget Don Tolliver on this track? This scratches some, uh, some itch in my brain. I like it. I saw that the other album has Blade. Anyways, I like it. Smiley Ball. It's one of those songs that feels like auditory crack. It's very bright, but it's never annoying, which I feel like is always that hard uh, mix to have. It's hard to make a song like that not get on your nerves, and I feel like Skrillex nailed it, so I liked it a lot. Dude, this song has Dylan Brady. One sec. I've heard this song, and I've given it a like. Wait, I've heard- wait, it's this song, literally. Wait a second, it's the song we're about to listen to. I've given the song a like. DJ Khaled! DJ Khaled! This comes off as gimmicky, uh, like, super formulaic and gimmicky. Was was I really a fan of this shit when I first heard this? I, I, I gotta say, this shit ain't hitting the same. Hey. It's not the sense I have a problem with, it's the annoying, cheesy sampling that happens in between everything, making it sound like old school, awful, gimmicky dubstep. Um, which I feel like is... It's what it's going for, and I just don't really like it. Especially, it, it doesn't work in the album either. I think it's just so different. It, it just sounds off. I, I think this song's a shrug for me. I don't think it works in the album at all. Wee, ew, wee. Mods, ban them all. Purge the chat. We'll start a new chat. One without judgment. Of me, of course. Of course, I can judge everyone else, but of judgment of me. Okay, we'll start a new world. Next song, Hazel theme. DJ Khaled! I love that button. We have Burial- We have Porter Robinson at home. We have Porter Robinson on the next track, literally. I represent the ghetto! I represent the streets! Not, I mean, it's whatever. It's like a transition, I guess. Next song's still here. Okay, now this literally sounds like Burial. Okay, I will say that this actually sounds like Burial. Porter Robinson, mad overrated, only pretentious people who don't want to listen to EDM listen to him. I disagree. Um, I think Porter Robinson brings a level of emotion to uh, electronic music that is very refreshing. I represent the ghetto! I represent the streets! Oh! Wait! Porter Robinson taught Ludwig how to use FL Studio. I don't watch any Ludwig. The guy seems nice. Man, quick rant. I don't know why. I just literally cannot watch Ludwig. And it has nothing to do with him. He seems like such a great guy. Like, genuinely. But at the same time, I just can't watch his content at all. I, I, I don't know. It's like, I don't even have a problem with him. It's just, it's one of those things where it's just like, I, I don't feel like I'm on the same uh, brainwave as him. Most big streamers just really aren't interesting to me at all. Amaranth? Oh, well, I can watch Amaranth. Okay, let's be honest here. Everyone can watch Amaranth. I mean, let's, let's... Oh, wrong button. Wait, where is that button? Oh, that's not a button. I clicked, uh... Where is it? Where did it, where'd it go? Let's be honest, anybody here could... Like, anyone who just sits in front of a computer and does what I do and makes more money than me just makes me feel like, you know what, if I just, instead of watching this person do what I should be doing, I should just go live and do what they're doing, which is sitting in front of a camera and making an ungodly amount of money doing literally uh, the bare minimum. That's literally what it is. And maybe that's why it's so hard watching a lot of these people, even if they are talented. There is no level of work that they could put in to where they will be making what they are working for, basically. Like, it is just hard to watch because of that, you know? I have not streamed on Twitch in forever. 
Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm feeling all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah the best fuck. I mean, yeah, Skrillex has matured a lot as an artist. You, I mean, right now, Lil Yachty's album is my album of the year. That song went on forever, but it kind of worked. Smiley Ball. It's like a dream in a way, and I think that this vocal line is okay. It's beating it into your head, but I think that it works as an outro for this whole project, almost as a triumphant feeling uh, in a way that I thought actually was pretty uh, kind of cool. Yeah, I thought that this was overall a pretty consistent listen, um, and yeah, the best thing that I've heard from Skrillex, because the only thing I've heard from Skrillex. Yo, someone send me $50 so I can go get a fancy lunch after this stream, you know what I'm saying? Cha-ching! Come on, don't be stingy, all right? Let's go, hurry it up. This is the life of a streamer. I say and you do. What kind of Brad Army is this, huh? You ain't even giving me money when I ask for it? Just, I never loved you guys. Ever. I only loved Kid Rock. Fuck all you hoes! Detroit till I die, motherfucker! Anyways, uh, yeah, let's, uh, I'm gonna add up the score and see what overall I feel on this, but it's probably gonna be, uh, positive overall. Final score on this album is a 7-. Pretty good. It's a good listen overall. That's, that's very positive. I overall enjoyed this project, uh, and I'm curious to return to it and see if I get anything more out of it. So, pretty good. Good listen. Felix shows a more matured side on Quest for Fire, leaving most gimmicks in the past and focusing on a strong EDM auditory experience. Needless to say, Skrillex shows veteran stripes on this project and comes through. With more listens, Quest for Fire is a very flashy listen, especially compared to the sister album that we're going to be reviewing right after this. It is an album with a lot of whoop, 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 and fancy fun stuff, but I feel like it isn't completely overshadowed by it. I still think that it is a fun time regardless, even on return listens, which I feel like is usually a good indicator on stuff that is gimmicky, is when I return to it, do I still enjoy it? The answer is yes. But that being said, we're not done. Ladies and gentlemen, that is just one of the Skrillex albums that was released. The second one here, Don't Get Too Close, was not widely received uh, in a positive light. In fact, it was uh, heavily regarded as trash. It is one of the lowest rated albums of the year so far. Uh, so, <laughs> I have no idea what, what uh, can go wrong. It's got fewer tracks, and it's got Blade on it, okay? How can it be bad? It's got Blade on it. Yeah, people don't like this one. I'm a little nervous. It's got Justin Bieber and Don Tolliver on the track. It's got Chief Keef, Kid Cudi, Young Lean, Blade, Pink Panthers, Trippy Red. I mean, it's got an interesting track list in here. Uh, let's give it a shot. You know, let's not just jump in and judge it. Uh, maybe everyone else is wrong about this one, all right? One of the tags on this is literally overhated. First track on Don't Get Too Close, Don't Leave Me Like This. Is it wicked, uh... Wait, is this the same song that was literally on the other album? You're right, 666 viewers. Okay, Don't Leave Me Like This is not the most st striking intro. I, I feel like the one on the other album at least was just overall more filled out, which I think made it a more satisfying listen. I don't hate it, but it just it feels like an intro track rather than a song on its own. It's a shrug. All right, next song, Way Back, with Trippy Red and Pink Panthers. I like this. It's quite good. Great start, Way Back is very quick, but very punchy. Um, I think that these two have a pretty solid chemistry musically. Uh, and yeah, it's it's very sweet actually great start to the sound smiley ball for me Don't really have many issues with that Honestly, uh, yeah one of the best that I could uh, ask for next song selecta Okay What what what? No trippy red does not sound like Lil Dicky and if he does I didn't pay attention or ever think about it like that because trippy red actually has a very unique voice in hip-hop Lil Dicky doesn't. Okay, everything about this comes off as a lot more low-key, and I'd even say uh, more together than the last project, 
what I liked about the last project that we just listened to is every song itself was just so strong individually, and these pieces all just seem to sort of tie together into something, which I I don't want to say definitively that's what's going on, but that's just kind of a little bit how I feel, which it's fine. It's it's a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, even in the production, like, I don't know, this feels a bit more copy and paste. Like, it's it's less exciting. And again, I mean, trust me, I want to root for this album. I don't want to fall into the, you know, category of the people who just don't like this because other people don't like this. I really want to give this a shot, but I genuinely find this to be less interesting than what I just heard, which might be the Achilles heel of this album. Select, I feel like I, I'm not crazy about the feature. It's very simple and straightforward. It's okay. I, I, I just, I know I'm not supposed to be as pumped up. It's supposed to be, you know, a little bit loving and emotional. But even then, I just don't feel like the, the feature did the best for that for me. It's a shrug. I, I'm honestly not loving this. Though I still respect what it's trying to go for. And I'm hoping that it, it picks up a little bit. I, I thought the last song did this just better. Next song, Ceremony, featuring Young Lean and Blade. Like, I'll say I think Blade does a better job at matching the tone than Young Lean does, as it just seems like he's doing this really uninteresting moany rap thing. It it's just not really fitting it. Bradley from the future here, I was wondering when I should uh, pop in and say something, but this album overall has grown on me, especially this first half, which I think is actually great, and in my opinion, just as good as the first album. Um, I think that this is, again, like, as Lego, she said, a lot more low-key, kind of at home, but there's something that, like, the more I listen to, the less it's a surprise to me, the less I'm looking for that flashy production from the first project, and the more I just kind of accept for what it is. Um, so a lot of my criticisms, just especially in this first half, I don't really stand by, and that's one of them. And so I feel like this is just overall uh, a lot more easygoing than I kind of just, uh, I guess, accept it as. Falling back on me. Humans type album? <laughs> Maybe. Am I actually Blade? No, unfortunately not. Uh, this is Skrillex Song Machine? I don't know if I'd say that. Anyways. Uh, I'm guessing he's just letting Features star because he's got bigger names for this one. Yeah. Yeah, it feels that way. But I feel like some of the worst moments on the previous project were just the big stars taking up the spotlight uh, who didn't really match the tone as well. And I feel like so far that's sort of what I'm getting with this project, except for the second song where I think it really, uh, where, where it really did work. But yeah, the star power here just isn't, isn't punct puncturing for me. That song for me is a strong shrug. I think Young Lean sounds comatose and dead over this song, and Blade brings uh, his signature magic, which I think actually sounded quite pleasant, even though it didn't feel like I was listening to a Skrillex song at all. Next song, Ceremony, no, uh, Real Spring, we just listened to Ceremony. Oh. Free Young Thug, yeah. Is that really worth the timeout? I like this Mickey Mouse feature. Push me to the edge. All my friends are dead. That last drop was kind of ass, but I feel like this song brings a decent amount of energy, um, which makes me think uh, maybe I only liked the last album because it wasn't comatose, like this uh, album has kind of been presenting. Uh, I don't know. Real Spring, it's decent. Smiley Ball. I'm in Blade L. I, I like this song. I, I thought it had had some bump. Next song, Summertime with Kid Cudi. DJ Khaled! Huh? What's that, Cudi? Yeah, this song feels extremely incomplete and honestly at points sort of obnoxious. Uh, I mean, there, there's still some Kid Cudi bump to it, but there's something missing. It's a, it's a shrug. Missing the Kid Leroy? I don't know if that's true. One hit? Bad for me. Two hits? Bad for oh me. God. Jack, play that back. Always 
acting funny with your funny ass. Put your head on me to the reggaeton. Sir, I wanna buy these shoes for my mama, please. It's Christmas Eve and these shoes are just her size. I woke up in Chris Brown's body. So I did shit turn into Freaky Friday. I can't believe that it's Freaky Friday. Yeah, it's Freaky Friday. We love the earth. It is our planet. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's Skrillex on this song. I forgot. Uh, I, I like the, uh, you know, the gun shells at the bottom of the song that make it sound like I'm listening to Burial. Uh, but it doesn't sound like I'm listening to Skrillex until the last minutes of that song. I thought it was a total fucking mess. I thought the features were awful. I couldn't, I didn't think that Chief Keef matched this shit at all. Headphones. First red headphones that oh. Skrillex has gotten today. Uh, rightfully goes to that pile of garbage that I just heard. That sounded like... Great ass. Gun shells make the beat legitimate. Next song, 3 a.m. featuring Anthony Green and Prentice. 3 a.m. Probably need to get to sleep, but I really want to sleep about you. Yeah, yeah. Kids, Bob. Anthony Green was a singer in various post-hardcore bands in the last 20 years. Bro, what? We got 10-year-olds on the track. Wait, what did he just say? Did you say I kill my hoes with no remorse? Oh, hopes. All the pitch shifting makes it hard. I, I could not hear what he said. Roblox the hood core. I still see your shadows in my room. I don't think this is as much of a mess as bad for me, um, but I just, I, I think that it's annoying. I didn't like it, red headphones. Dog. Girl, I want his head, I want it right now. I want his soul. Don't get too close. Title track of this album, here we go. Those those brand names on this shit, man. You give me peace of mind, you tell me we'll be fine. In the city, I ain't seen your face. I lost my mind, medication. I sauce for a He literally is just trying to sound like Don Tolliver here, like straight up. Well, what? Excuse me? Did you ground even when they aimed at us? Okay, I mean, I knew it wasn't, but it just sounds like it. Oh, now I hear it. Now I hear it. This is somehow worse than Justin Bieber. Can't wait for the Skrillex. Dude, I forgot this is a Skrillex song. Not the worst song on here, but it's so mediocre. It doesn't... I don't know. It's just so dull. And what an obvious poke for a hit. But... Don't get too close. This is the title track. Let's just let's keep going. I'm I'm not vibing with this at all. DJ Khaled, fuck all you hoes, talking all that bullshit. We have C418 for, uh, at home. Do it again. Let's do it again. Not even interesting. Garage with my friends. Okay. All day won't end. Don't get too close. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. DJ Khaled! I'm on my PC. That's Skrillex singing now? No Jesus Christ. I appreciate what this song's trying to do. Uh, and what it's... Uh, like, I, I have an appreciation for the attempt. But I think it's horrible. It's a red headphone. I think it's actually horrible. Dog. I think it's so cringe. I think it's so ridiculous. Really making you feel those four minutes? Yeah, that was the worst song of the album by far. There's some notable qualities about the last two tracks, specifically the last one sort of being a uh, feature, or I'd, I'd say uh, a feature presentation from this BB person as they kind of give a, a massive performance. And the next one also is just a Sway Lee solo cut, both of which I'm, uh, I've taken two naps today. I feel grumpy as all hell. I've had horrible dreams. I just feel like a like a lump of crap, so I don't want to edit the rest of this video. Plus, it's already going to be about 40 minutes long, so I'm just going to say these two songs aren't worth it. Um, album is overall grown. I'm not even going to play this outro, because why, why even bother? Album is a 5 minus. A lot of the issues I had with it, I feel like I don't 
feel as uh, shocked by anymore, especially first half. So, um, Bad For Me with Chief Keef is actually kind of a catchy song, though I think the lyrics are the most derivative, awful thing ever. Um, it's one of those weird instances where I don't really care enough, and I actually still find myself having fun with the song. Um, Painting Rainbows. <sighs> <laughs> pretty bad but again not the worst it's it's just not that offensive it's a five minus for me and i guess that's about it i'm just gonna do the outro here too because you know what editing it's a bitch you know what i'm saying so that's all i got for you guys thanks everyone for watching i'll see you next time peace